If you needed to create an animation of gun shells ejecting from a gun, uh, there are a lot of different ways you can go about it. One thing that comes to mind is to use a particle emitter and then create a model of a shell, a gun shell, uh, uh, like a bullet shell uh, casing, and, and use effects link and link it to the particle emitter. And, but then you end up with a lot of geometry in the scene. Uh, and the shell can be very low poly, but if you're going to see it from a distance, uh, you don't necessarily need to use geometry uh, and use effects linker and dynamic effects linker. We can use hypervoxels, and I thought we could take a look at setting that up. So I'm going to come over to the items tab and add a particle emitter. Okay, and I'm just going to adjust the settings a little bit. I'm going to push play, and I know I don't need a hundred per second. I'm just going to do 12, which is probably still going to be a lot, but just so that we can see what we're doing. And for um, velocity, let's do 4 in the Y, so they're shooting up. But I want the shells to, to come back down, so I'm going to add a little bit of gravity. And let's add a little bit of explosion just to kind of spread them out. I'm just going to use the mini slider. And let's just try one. Okay, that, that's working for me. Just enough to, I'm going to lower the um, amount to eight. I'm going to show you my complete lack of gun knowledge. And I'm going to say that this many shells can be firing out of the gun at one time. But uh, we get, we'll get the idea. You can be as accurate as you want on your guns. I, I try and stay away from them. So I'm going to just point my camera right at the uh, the emitter something like this. Uh, because we're going to be working with hypervoxels, I'm going to go ahead and load up Viper. I like to, to save uh, as much time as possible. Uh, I'm going to head over to Control F6 to open up the volumetrics tab on the effects panel. Come over to add volumetric and choose hypervoxels. Double click and we'll be working with um, with these settings. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click on emitter so that we can see that we are applying hypervoxels to our particles and I don't want surface voxels uh, now far enough away you could probably squish these voxels and make them look like shells but I'm gonna go for uh, sprites okay and right now the sprite looks like um, just this fog but I'm gonna go over to the image editor and load up it's just a simple little um, image of a shell, just a 3D shell, and uh, it's a 32-bit target, so it's got an alpha embedded into the file. You don't need to have an alpha embedded in, but we're going to take advantage of, of this one. Okay, So I'm going to come over to Shading, and for Clips, I'm going to add the shell as a clip. Now it's not looking uh, all that accurate right now but that's because over in hypertexture it's got crumple on. I'm just gonna say none. Okay, And uh, I'm gonna come back over to um, the shading and with the alpha I'm gonna set it to embedded. I wanted to use the embedded information, the embedded alpha information of that 32-bit targa. Again, I, I don't have to have that. I could base it off of luminosity or I could just key out the black. But there was some dark, um, and we can change the threshold and stuff, but there was some dark in there. I, I'm just going to take advantage of that embedded uh, alpha. Okay, And what I'll do is jump over back to the geometry tab, and I'm going to size those shells down a bit something like that. Let's go to normal so they look a little bit better in our preview. And the other thing, well let's do a quick little um, preview. Okay, so there goes some shells shooting out of the gun. Okay, They're flipping and that's because we have a line to path uh, set up, but let's go ahead and, and take a look at this. Push play. Okay, so there's our there's our shells. I'm going to go ahead and stop that and free the preview. I don't want them to kind of flip upside down, so I'm going to turn align to path off. And now let's make a, a preview. So now they're firing off and coming back down. Now, from a distance, we got a little highlight on there. We've got the shells coming out. Um, they're particles, so they could bounce off the, the ground and, and do all kind of stuff. Um, we're kind of close, so it kind of looks like they're coming out and back in. That's just the particle uh, explosion. We can set up the, um, the particles however we want. Again, 
you don't have to use hypervoxels to do this. Um, you could create a four point polygon, just a square polygon, map this image on there and use effects linker and that would be pretty low poly. Uh, but again, you end up with a scene full of objects. So um, one nice thing about using hypervoxels on particles is that uh, I've got an emitter in the scene and I don't have any other objects. I don't have a single shell object in the, the scene. It's just using an image. And from a distance, um, it could work. If you need to get really close and see the shells, well, you're, you're going to probably want to go the route of uh, using actual geometry and effects linker to link that geometry to the particles. Uh, but for distant shots where you just want a bunch of shells flying, um, nothing beats using hypervoxels. It's fast and uh, gets the job done. So that's just a quick look at using an image uh, with the with hypervoxels with hypervoxels set to object type sprite and we're just applying um, over in shading we're just applying that image and taking advantage of the alpha.